we begin our journey on Earth in a time of great hardship and turmoil. The U.S. has gone completely broke because Americans have elected a mentally handicapped baby goat as their president, and in case you don't know anything about mentally handicapped baby goats, they don't know much about economics. Anyway, times are tough. Crime at an all-time high. Criminals are breaking into businesses and homes in broad daylight. That's how bad things have gotten. The good, decent people who remain need help. They need a hero. In a small town outside of Chicago lives a young man, 23, 5, 9, 170 pounds, just graduated college, and now lives at home writing superhero comics to pass the time. His name, Mark Smith. We know it's not a super-inspired name, but that's the name we picked while sitting on the couch, contemplating names, so shut up. Mark is your typical geek. He likes comics, computers, superheroes, video games, and doesn't have a girlfriend. Mark is a frustrated young man. He's smart and did everything right. But the unfortunate hardships bestowed upon the people made it near impossible for a young buck to find work, even a computer science major. So he did the only rational thing. He spent his days making comics, sleeping, and unsuccessfully meeting girls. Turns out the ladies don't want an unemployed dork who lives at home. The only escape Mark has from the chaos in this wasteland of an existence are his comics. He writes the stories, draws the characters. It is a way for him to immerse himself in a world where he made the rules, saved the day, and got the girl. When Mark wrote his comics, he checked out of reality and was consumed by fantasy. He created and tried out many different characters over the years, but his favorite was a hero he did not know what to call. He struggled with names, but none seemed to fit. Mr. Explodu? Nah, that's dumb. Hmm. How about the Masked Majeure? That's dumb too. What the heck does that even mean? I got it. Mr. Stupid Face, cause that's what I am for not being able to think of a name. Gore! Though he never told anyone, Mark secretly hoped he could one day sell his comics and turn them into a whole new franchise. Wouldn't that be something? He thought. Me, a comic book success. Marcus! screeched Mark's mum. Marcus! You better not be looking at girly pictures online. Get your butt in here and help me make dinner. Okay, ma! yelled Mark. Mark got up from his drawing table and slugged down the hallway to the kitchen. Hey, Ma, what do you need? What do I need? Pa, I need your ass to get a job. Ma, I told you I tried every place in town. No one's looking to hire an IT guy fresh out of school right now. Excuses, Mark. Excuses. If you want to make it in this world, you've got to grab life by the nuts and reel it in. You're young. You have your health. Make something of yourself. You know what, Ma? I'm trying so get off my case, okay? There's nothing more I can do. What? Do you want me to go work at Burger Misters? I didn't go to school for that. Mark started out of the kitchen, angry. Then his mom said, Mark, stop. Look, I'm sorry. I just... You're my son, my little boy, my only kid, and I just want you to be happy. Can you do me a favor? I ran out of some things I need to make supper. Can you go to the store? Okay, mum. What do you need? Here's a list. Get these things. And if any money's left over, get yourself something. Oh, and while you're there, why don't you say hello to Bethany? I hear she's single. Ma, Bethany weighs 250 LBS and has three kids. Didn't I teach you nothing, Mark? It's what's on the inside that counts. She's a sweet girl, you should talk to her. Okay, Ma, whatever. Then Mark headed out the door to get some groceries. On his scooter, he traveled down the road somewhat distracted, as he again was pondering names for his superhero. Mark came to an intersection and stopped at the light. I just don't know. No names fit. How am I ever going to write a whole comic book series if I can't even think of one good stinking? Cut short, a huge 18-wheeler pulled up unexpectedly. It surprised him in his daydreaming. Whoa, crap. Jeez. Mark glanced back at the tanker, and saw a sign that said, Extremely dangerous volatile substance. Handle with care. 
it struck Mark as odd that a truck carrying dangerous substances would drive through his small town. Isn't that illegal, he thought. The light changed, and he continued his journey. He arrived at Superdan's supermarket, parked his scooter, and headed inside to collect the things on his list. In front of the store was a little white pop-up bus. Mark dreaded seeing that bus because it only spelled grief for him. It was a mobile hot dog stand an old classmate slash bully of Mark's drove around the city. Crap, he thought. Maybe he won't see me. Mark stared straight ahead, hoping to be ignored. Hey, Marcus, Mark was caught. Hey, Mark, I'm talking to you, man. How have you been? Still living at your mom's? Angry and embarrassed, Mark slowly turned toward the bus. Hey, there, Joe. Yeah, I'm still at home. Things are tough, you know. Ha, I knew it. Bullshit, Marcus, look at me. I bring in a ton of money with this stand. You just got to apply yourself. I should have beat you up more in school. Maybe then you'd be somebody. Mark just gave a half-witted grin, then went inside the store. Making his way up and down the aisles, Mark collected the items on his list. With a few bucks left over, he wanted to check out the comics on the magazine rack. Hmm, I know the new issue of Mega Mind Master is out, but I don't see it. Then he glanced over at the nudie magazines, then back to the comics. Guess I'll just get the new Captain Extreme. Mark threw the comic in the cart and went to check out. The only free line was Bethany's, so he unwilling walked up. Hey, Bethany, said Mark. Mark, I'm so happy to see you. We haven't talked in forever. I'm single now, kicked Raymond to the curb after I found out he was cheating on me. Yeah, my mum was saying something. Really? Bethany exclaimed. Wow, I guess the whole town knows. So, your total is $26.10. Mark handed her the money, grabbed his things and headed out. Wait, Mark, if you ever want to do something sometime time, give me a call. Then Bethany handed Mark a piece of paper with her number on it. Mark gave Bethany a reluctant smile and nodded his head to falsely indicate he may call. Outside, Mark saw Dan talking to his customers with a big dumb grin on his face. Asshole, Mark thought. He proceeded to the parking lot. Suddenly the sound of tires squealing and motors revving burst out of nowhere. Mark's eyes darted around looking for where the noise was coming from, up ahead, he saw a group of people on motorcycles chasing what looked like the same 18-wheeler he saw earlier. The bike gang was surrounding the truck. Some were swinging chains and a few had guns. The convoy was flying down the street, heading right for the supermarket parking lot. Shit! yelled Mark. Then he dropped his bags and ran back toward the store. Shit! 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 Oh, fuck! Ah! Shit! Mark didn't know what to do. In shock, he just stood there inside the store, jittering around. He wanted to warn everyone, but was kind of frozen in place. A customer, on her way to the entrance, bumped into him and dropped her things. Hey, asshole! Watch where you're going! The lady shouted. Bike! Gee guns stuttered Mark. Before either of them could say another word, the sound of gunshots became loud and obvious. Mark and the lady stared at each other, confused and frightened. Then there was a huge bang. Something exploded. What followed was the terrible sound of metal scraping on pavement. Some crazy stuff was going down outside. Metal screeched and scraped. Guns, shots fired. People were yelling and screaming. All was a panic. Then a big thud. The building shook violently, and dust filled the air as things fell off shelves near the front of the store. Mark quickly ducked it down into the fetal position, hoping to come out of the event unscathed.